Hi. How are you? Long time no see. Really? Oh, I'm working. It's been a while. I already talked to Rick last time. Oh, yes. Two I did. Or three months ago, though. Well, probably, right? No, I know. I've been gathering new leads. I started fresh. All right. Awesome. What's up? How can I help you out? Okay. So I have, I'm under contract with a seller. Both her and I are out of state from the subject property. Where and how do I go about getting locked box and putting it on there? Because I have cash buyers calling me left and right, and she's too far, and I'm out of state. So, okay. well, you've been busy, which is good. I'm glad you're actually taking action. So, that you have no, you know what? No excuse. You're actually doing deals. So, hey, shout out to you. So, I'm not upset. <laughs> Not hopping on these things because you're doing deals. So I appreciate that. So uh, what state is she in and what state are you in? What state is the property in? I'm in North Carolina. The property is in Ohio. She's in Ohio, but she's an hour away. So it's a little inconvenient for her to drive to open the door every time a cash buyer needs to go there. Got it. So I'm not I'm not going to ask you where the property is at because I don't want to bring it to thousands of people, okay? We're not, we're not going to talk about that. So she's an hour away. All right. So the best thing I can tell you is I want you to find somebody on the whatever metro areas near their gigs or jobs group. Avoid every real estate group like the plague, okay? Because you don't want someone trying to steal your deal. Yeah. I would probably hire somebody for 50 to 60 bucks to take 50 pictures of the property and to put a lockbox on the house. So they're going to do two for one. Oh, okay, because I had pictures and videos. She sent me those, but the cash buyers that want to go in person, it's like, okay, I need to know how to yeah do this lockbox thing. Okay, we just give me fifty bucks to do lockbox then. Twenty bucks to lockbox, thirty bucks to put it on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that'll work out. Other than that, I have five deals under contract, and I have analysis paralysis like crazy. It's bittersweet because when I have that many deals locked up, I just stare at my laptop like. Oh, How many deals got locked up? Five. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And so my you brain know, is right now. There's a lot. people begging to have the problem you have right now. You know that. I know, but the, it's, it's it is bittersweet because you get excited about getting a deal, and then when you're when you get it, the real anxiety starts once the contract gets signed because you got to get the cash buyer to get paid. So that's the most important part of the whole deal process. So it's like, oh, I need to close on all of them. But that's five cash buys you have to find, and they're all in different markets. Yeah, it's there's two stresses, right? There's stress of having no deals, and the stress of having too many deals. They're both the same equal of stress, but I'd rather have one stress over the other. So uh, let's help you out with this. So you have five. How many of these deals are you struggling to sell right now? Well, two. Okay. And one of them, it was a two for one deal. I got two properties from one seller. So he wanted the same price for both. But one is brand new everything. And the other one have like bullet holes all over the place. So I'm going to have to let him know I can't. Of course, he can't get the same price for both. I mean, I'm not... I don't think it's the best thing to do, but just lock them both up and then bring a buyer through and explain why you can't be at this price for the other one. Because um, if he agreed for 70 on each one or whatever price on each one, right? Get get the nice one locked up first. And then, because he agreed to 70 on that one. We didn't agree on the both one. So, and then you can kind of uh, negotiate on the second one. I but, am going to tell him, um, we're going to negotiate the price, but we'll still close on the same day. He just has to bring that price down. Yeah. And okay. there's a bullet hole thing, right? Yeah. I went to a property once and made a huge profit on. I walked in and the guy cleaned up the, it was a bad tenant. He cleaned up the property as well as he could. I pop up the attic for a second, shell case drops. I get $30,000 uh, reduction. He didn't want to tell me there was a shooting <laughs> happening on the property. 30,000. Um, I picked it up on my like, yeah, nine millimeter. Shell casing? No. Yeah, I was like, yep, nine millimeter right here. And he's like, oh, shoot. I got $30,000 reduction. He, he acted like he didn't want to tell me. I'm like, I can, I, I can look up police reports, right? But... <laughs> Like you get reductions for it, right? Like it's that doesn't look good at all when I bring a tenant in, and so it's a it's actually a really valid excuse, and people understand that. So um, yeah, use that as a big excuse. Yes, and then I have one in Georgia. It's really really bad, and I got it like extremely low, but it's so bad nobody wants it, and I'm only. I mean, the price is so so cheap, but when they see it, they're like, ew. Is this in the middle of Georgia. It's in the, the, the part that everybody wants. Yeah. So 
in that part of Georgia, <laughs> right? Like you got the sec section eight buyers are gonna be your best one because there's one that government check every single month and they don't really want to deal with the, the annoyance of all this. Those are gonna be your best ones. So you're gonna have to figure out where the section eight buyers are. And the best way to figure that out is through probably eviction. Uh, the eviction list is gonna be the best way to find buyers for those type of properties. And then the second one is just cold calling the four rents on properties that are renting below 750 a month. Right. A month in that area, maybe. I don't, I don't know what the rents are gonna be for that area specifically, but the cheapest rents uh, filter out by there and just call those owners. Yes. And I do have a lot of buyers, but I notice a lot of buyers prefer cosmetic and turnkey, which doesn't work well for me because I get my leads from code enforcement. So yeah. I, it's a lot of buyers, surprisingly, they really don't like heavy work. Which sucks because I get it extremely low. So if if if, if for example I'm assigning it to a cash buyer for 10k, then they'll go to the house and say, "Oh, that's a lot of work." But I'm like, "It's 10k. What do you expect?" So, so that's where I am. I need more um, heavy repair type of cash buyers. Cut yeah, job, I, cut glass. I used to buy a lot of rentals in really like high crime areas. And I've had three renovations got broken into. And I'm like, oh, I'm never doing heavy renovations on my rentals in those areas. I get it. Um, but those are like really high crime areas, like paint equipment, foul. I was like, oh, it's a big headache. So I get it. But at a certain price, it works for anybody. Not all of them are in high areas, but if a cash buyer see picks and it's a completely gutted down to the studs, I thought that was a good thing because you get to start fresh. But when they see just the shell, they're like, oh no, that's too much work for me. So I think I need um gut job type of cash buyers. Are you ready for a gut job cash buyer? Ready for one? Yeah. All you got to do is go to the uh, you, this is a harder one, but because you have ex extraordinary circumstances, you might have to resort to realtors in Georgia. And the realtors that are buyers agents for these rough houses, do you know what I'm talking about? So I like to go on realtor.com or zillow.com and look at solds under 40 grand or 30 grand in the past month and cold call the buyer agents for them because they just had that person buy for 20K. Right. You might have to give them a, like a three or $4,000 to bring the buyer through, but you're still going to make an assignment on it. Right. And so like, those are tough properties. Like those are always tough, but most likely if a realtor has found a couple buyers like that, they're looking to buy in that. I just got to have the realtor pay them and the realtor can give them to go do it. And speaking of the area, one of my cash buyers went there and someone ran up on him. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But, okay. I have five. I mean, I don't plan on letting it go. I'm still going to reduce it. I don't care what I make. It, it get to a point you sometimes you'll have, it'll be just one of those deals where you don't even care to make 10 K no more. You're like, you know what? I don't care if I make four, just go. I just want it to close. Yeah, that, that it, yeah, it's a rough one. I, I've there's a couple areas, um, not where I live, but like two hours away from me, where I, I looked at some deals. It, it, it gets sketchy. So uh, yeah, it's ain't fun. That St. Louis and certain er areas like uh, Los Angeles are like that, and then Chicago, but like very rare. Like there's four or five markets that that's the case. So it's tough. Um, but Section Eight is probably gonna be your best friend in realtors, honestly. Oh, yeah. Section 8. I'm very familiar with um, that website because I do go there to find my buyers, especially if they're good buy and hold. Yeah. And usually, you know, because properties are so cheap that they're not paying somebody to go like list the property or do like they can't afford it. So you're speaking right to the owner, which is actually really good. Yep. So that, that's the way I'd probably do that. What about the other deals? Oh, the other deals are good. I know one, I'm, I'm JVing helping someone find a cash buyer and I felt him, found him a cash buyer in 20 minutes so that was pretty cool that's like how much you making on money but it wasn't my deal I, I'm helping somebody I'm helping two people actually so that's two deals where I'm helping somebody and three I have on my own are you getting paid on those of, am I getting paid good. Of course. how much are you getting paid on those JV deals 50 50 good of course good. <laughs> keep it up I'm telling you like for example, I'm watching this, you know, like if someone wants to do a deal with you, how would they reach out to you? Oh, Facebook, email. You know, see the name right there. Boom. Yes. Request me on Facebook. Shoot me a message. I respond. And um, I'm good. I'm good with finding cash buyers. I just okay. need more uh, gut job ones. All right. I like it. You see it. 
throwing all these things you get people hopping on so it, it's working so uh keep it up that's awesome yeah I, that's probably gonna be the best way and as somebody that does a ton of jv deals and you give me random markets i figure out pretty fast what type of properties they are and how to find the cash buyers because really what i found is cash buyers either go in two or three type of you know buckets you got the guy that's trying to flip properties and you got the guy or gal that's trying to rent properties out and you got the section eight people which are different right and each one's got their own little thing you know the people that flip are pretty easy for me to find they want nicer houses right and then you got the rentals and those are a whole different ball of wax because they just want different things and you know there's a lot of customer service in it right like i don't think people talk about that you really gotta wine and dine these people out uh but it it's worth it right it is worth it as long as they don't want turnkey ready i i don't i can't align with the turnkey ready buyers because i'm queen code enforcement all day and i request the worst of the worst i specifically asked for um structural damage which i'm trying to change it because of the buyer situation so now instead of always asking for structural violations I'll go for the little interior maintenance, little plumbing issue, you know, so it won't be as bad because boy, do I get what I ask for. <laughs> hey, like that's the attitude you need though. I love it when someone says no to me. I'm like, oh, you, you don't understand. You're not saying no to me. You're you're literally causing so much pain for yourself. You don't you don't even know. Because I'm gonna be here next week and the week after until I get this list. It works. Okay, I get the list. The, the list is no problem at all. Never a problem getting a list. But I request structural violations. So when they send it to me, it's houses that if you light a match, it'll probably fall apart. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Now the good news is. I can offer 5K all day on all of them. But now looking for buyers who are telling me they want medium to light repairs, turnkey ready. And here it is. I have all these gut job falling apart houses. That's why I need to change my um, some of my buyers. I need heavy repair. Yeah. The properties I'm locking up. It's structural, bad structural violations. And I just became comfortable with fire damages. And I was always afraid of those. Now, the reason why I like fire damages is because they, the insurance people give them a quote which means I don't have to guesstimate the repair cost. I love that. It makes my life so much easier. Yeah. I always ask them, oh, did the insurance, I don't care about the insurance money. Of course they could keep it, but what did they say the repair cost would be? And boom, I don't have to guess. There you have it. And it's easy. Yeah. You get people, they literally get 40 year degrees on actuarial science to figure out repair costs. So you don't have to. It's great. Right. Well, everybody that. I, li I like when people tell me, oh, I'm waiting for the insurance. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, you're doing well. Um, I like it. So reach out to you. Um, I would probably do those in the cash buyers and you keep going after it, right? Um, the one thing I could tell you is, you know this probably from doing some deals, but like you can't get a discount on the deal, right? You can't get a good deal unless there's a problem with the property, right? So it's like the buyers that want to turn key, it's like if I go to seller that has a really nice house, they're not wanting to go to sell it for 70 cents on the dollar. It just doesn't work like that. Exactly. And that's what's killing me. They're like, oh, turnkey ready, but we need it to be under 50K. And I'm like, what? Go on the MLS. Right? It's right there. Buy it for full retail. That's why I tell them. They're like, oh, okay. I'll just buy yours then. Yeah, and but I'm I'm get I've gotten a lot better with finding cash buyers. I love it. And then my favorite um Secretary of State, the best one. Look up those corporates. And I'm talking about from the seller side and the buyer side. Yeah. I'm gonna skip over corporate owned, but based on my experience, when I send out postcard campaigns, corporate calls back. They call me back faster than individual owners. Oh, yeah. So look those up and then with the cash buyers instead of skip tracing a regular person i like to go after the corporate owned because it's like i guess more legit i guess i don't know if that's the right terminology yeah. so what i'll do i'll go to secretary of state in 2.5 seconds and go from there nice and that's it awesome well keep it up Chantel. uh let me know when those jv deals close uh love to talk to you about it love to see the proof and yep. post those jv deals in the facebook group because guess what happens you prove to people that you're actually doing it they're going to want to jv with you even more yep and there's eighty one thousand sneaky people in that facebook group so there's some deals on there they got your money they got your deals right now they got your money so no problem. Keep it up. all right thank you all right have a great one keep it up Thank you.